All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to our Rivals of Ixalan set review. Today we're tackling the gold cards. And uh, I think next we're going to do the artifact and the the lands together. So we should only have this part and the next part. If you guys haven't done so, uh, be sure to check out the white, blue, black, red, and green cards. And uh, slam those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy the content. Thank you. And Grath the Flame Chained. Three red and black. Starts with four mana, plus one each opponent discards a card and loses two life. I think this card, this this is a great ability. This is better than like Liliana of the Veil. It's also better than Liliana Vess. Um, so it's I think it's a strict upgrade on both of those. Unless, of course, you want to be discarding with Liliana of the Veil. Oh, I'll put my Gristle Brand in the graveyard. Okay, you're not going to be able to do that, sure. But being able to go to five and then make your opponent discard and <laughs> lose two life. Um... Pretty good. I think that's a, a solid plus one ability. Negative three is gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap it. It gains haste until the end of turn. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. It has converted mana cost three or less. I think this ability is great. You get to steal their biggest guy. Or if you don't want to steal their biggest guy, you can steal one of their smaller guys and then just kill it. Like this basically just kills a guy. So if they have a 3-3 a three, three that's unblockable or something, you could just steal it, attack them, kill it. It dies. I think that's fine. Um, it's, it's, it's a reasonable way of protecting Angrath because, uh, it only costs, he only costs five. So you're going to be playing this on five and hopefully your opponent doesn't have a four drop. They just have a two or three drop and you can do a little protecting. It protect, it attack, it protect. Uh, each opponent loses life equal to the number of cards in his or her graveyard. This is obviously a synergy with both the, ne the plus one and the negative three, because presumably you're going to be putting creatures in their graveyard from the negative three and they're making ring in the discard. And you've already been dealing life loss to them with a plus one. Um, starting at four and going to five on the first turn, I don't think getting to negative eight is that easy. Um, but still possible. And I think the first two abilities are reasonable. Um, this, I mean, I was going to say this might be better if it costs four. Obviously, it'd be better if it costs four. Would it be reasonable if it cost four? I don't know. I think this might see play. I like this in like a black red control shell um where you can just kind of attrition them out like you gotta consider like obnixilis was plus one draw a card and lose a lot and and you lose one life this is they discard a card and lose two life so it, you're getting the same it's the same card equity right like you're still up one card on your opponent and they lose two life instead of you losing one life um, it is good for, for EDH though, multiplayer commander, because it's each opponent discards a card, obviously, but I like this card. I think this is a good planeswalker. Uh, it does a lot of unique things and, uh, I'm okay with it. So at Zaken, at Zaken Seer, three mana for a two, three, tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Um, a two, three that taps for mana for three, not, not what I'm looking for my ramp creatures. Um, sacrifice it to I got this little hair sticking up here sacrifice it to return a dinosaur from your graveyard to your hand that's fine but do I really want to play three mana for this I don't know it's not I don't think this is a terrible card by any means I just don't know if it's good enough you definitely play this in limited because it, at, at worst it's a two three for three uh, it's gonna it, it, it ramps you and it gets you back a guy even if like they try to kill it you can sack it in response to get a guy back big game but for three mana, there's several other things I'd rather be playing and constructed, so. Azor the Lawbringer. Oh, I love this card so much. Six, six for six. So you got the uh, traditional Mark of the Beast. Six, six for six. Flying, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent can't cast instant or sorcery spells during that player's next turn. This is nice because if they don't have a removal spell in their hand at that time, um, if they draw one, they can't cast during their turn. So you have to go to your turn and then you get to untap. So either you get to, uh, keep up a counter spell to protect this guy, or you can attack and Sphinx's revelation, uh, which is one of my all time favorite magic cards. So having this on a six, six flyer is just so good. <laughs> Ideally, you're going to play this guy when you have like 10 mana. So you can counter all the chupacabras that will be killing it. Um, which is unfortunate because that card is pretty dumb. I like this card a lot, and along with the blue Elder Dinosaur, I think uh, these are both 
I think the, whether whether they see play or not, I think these are both very very strong control finishers, and uh, it just depends on the format, right? Like in one time or another, these would be good control finishers. I don't know if the metagame will support them as control finishers. I don't know if there's even a control deck they would fit into, but I think they're both very strong cards, and I I think they're fun. I, I would love to play with this card because it has Sphinx's relation on it. It's a 6-6 six, six flyer. And it, even, it, it even does more than that. If it just said flying, whenever it attacks, you may pay Sphinx's Revelation mana to gain X life and draw X cards. Wow, that's awesome. But it also has, they can't cast instant or sorceries during the next turn. That's, this is a lot of things, and I, I think this card is fantastic. Dead Eye Brawler, 2-4. And oh, here, here's another funny thing. If they have Scarab God, they don't actually even need to cast Chupacabra. So you don't even get to counter it. Kind of awkward. So if you're playing a control deck, you need to have things that can manage th those situations. Dead Eye Brawler, two four for four with Death Touch. Uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, if you have the city's blessing, draw a card. Okay, I mean this guy's fine. It's a two four for four in limited. Uh, it's got Death Touch, which is fantastic, and it has uh, Shadow Mage Infiltrator ability. I don't know if there's a, a name for that. But you do have to have a send for that part. Um, you're not going to play a 2-4 for 4 without any sort of evasion in standard, even though it has death touch. Uh, they're just better cards. Dire Fleet Neckbreaker. Jesus. It's violent. 3-2 for 4. Attacking pirates you control get plus 2, plus 0. Oh. This also counts itself, so it's basically a 5-2 on offense. And uh, this card's just fantastic and limited. All, all of the uncommons seem to be fantastic and limited, but not really tremendously playable and constructed. They're just a little too overcosted. Alendra, Alenda, not Alendra, not Glenna, Glenna Lenda, the Dusk Rose. Uh, unfortunately, Alenda, the Dusk Rose. For another 1 1 rare vampire, which is interesting. This seems like a theme in this set where there's a bunch of 1 1 vampires for like 4 mana. And they're all rare. 4 mana. Uh, Vampire Knight Lifelink. Okay. Whenever another creature dies, another creature, so theirs or yours, put a 1 1 counter on Alenda the Dusk Rose. When Alenda dies, create X 1 1 white vampires with Lifelink where X is her power. This card seems very good. I mean, you got to get around the, the fact that you're playing a 1 1 for 4 mana, presumably on turn 4. But, like, even if they kill her, you still get a 1 1 out of it. So it's all, at least 2. Two one ones for two mana, both of which, or for four mana, both of which have lifelink. And if you can kill two guys in the meantime, make her a three three, and then you get three guys out of it, it's not bad. It's a lot of work though, right? Like it's not, it's not super, it's not super convenient. Oh, someone, uh, Brian said, totally off topic, but I never knew you were a, a Renee Magritte fan. Son of Man is amazing. Yeah, Magritte's great. I love Mo I love a ton of Magritte's work. Um, I also have I also have Edward Hopper's Nighthawks in it right there. Uh, I like I like a lot of Hopper stuff though. I, I don't think it's just Nighthawks. Nighthawks is one of the more easily readily accessible uh, paintings, so it was easier to get. But Ed Edward Hopper has a great way of uh, portraying isolation in like these 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 modern environments and it's it's really great um like you can just look at a hopper painting and feel lonely <laughs> you're like wow that's really lonely but yeah okay uh Alenja the dusk rose okay uh card seems great as a build around um it doesn't survive a sweeper though if they like play a day of judgment or something you know hypothetically speaking She's going to die at the same time everything else dies. She'll see everything dying and she'll be like, oh, let me put some counters on. But you'll never actually get to put the counters on. So you'll never actually get the the, the life linkers. You'll just get you'll probably like one, one, one or however many are on there before the Day of Judgment. So again, this is a card that has a ton of potential, but I don't know whether it's going to like, again, it's, it's, it's uncertain whether it's going to be, uh, whether it's going to be utilized, I guess. Hadana's Climb. Three mana for a legendary enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. Then if that creature has three or more 1-1 one, one counters on it, transform this. Okay, I like this because you can play it pre-combat and then you get a counter the first turn it comes into play. So it does kind of do something on the turn you play it. That's cool. And then you flip it and what happens? You get Winged Temple. Winged winged or Winged, I wonder. Temple of Araska. I'm an English major, but... Uh, you know, you know that doesn't that doesn't give me access to every single pronunciation that exists. 
Tabitha add one mana if any color to your mana pool. This is a great feature. It seems like a lot of these lands that flip uh, add one mana of any color, which is pretty sweet as far as lands go. Like, turning all these lands into, like, City of Brasses is pretty strong. Uh, and then for three mana, one blue green target creature you control gains flying. It's plus X plus X where X is its power. That's pretty strong. And this is just three mana for an enchantment. All of these seem really strong. Like, even if you just have a 2-2, right? Like, you have a 2-2, you make it a 4-4 flyer for three mana. Well, for four mana because you're tapping a land to do it. Still, that's pretty good. One thing I don't like is that... Uh, Okay, so one thing I like about this, actually, I turned a dislike into a like. It says at the beginning of combat, put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control. And then if that creature has three or more 1-1 counters, transform it. I wish, I wish the transform was a May ability because this is legendary. So you don't necessarily want to be flipping into multiple of these. But on the other hand, you can just target a different creature. If you only have one creature and it already has three counters on it. I mean, then you're just going to lose this card. It's just going to be plus one, plus one counter. But you're probably not going to be playing it if that's the case. So, um, yeah, you just try to try to avoid flipping any future copies. And it's still, even if even if you don't want to flip it, it's still a plus one, plus one counter on, uh, on you know, any number of creatures for as long as it's on board. So, this card seems strong. I like this card a lot. Huatli, Radiant Champion. Four mana for a three loyalty Planeswalker. Plus one, put a loyalty counter on... Radiant Champion for each creature you control. So she already goes to four. If you played a two drop and a three drop and then a Hwatli, she goes to six. It's not bad, but it doesn't really do anything other than go to six, right? Like the ability is go to six. Negative one, target creature gets plus X plus X where X is the number of creatures you control. So clearly both effects are very, very creature based. Uh, depending on what e how many creatures you have. Uh, and then negative eight, you get an emblem with whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. That's very similar to the 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 Nissa emblem that was like whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. However, creatures are I would say harder to come by. Like you're always you're probably very very frequently going to have more creatures more lands than creatures in your deck and you can always play a land on your turns where you can't always play a creature um if it's in your hand like if you have a land in your hand and a creature in your hand you can always play the land whereas there are certain there are definitely restrictions on when you can or can't play certain creatures so i would say the 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 trigger on lands is a better ability but you can potentially like eh, there's situations where you can plus her once and then just negative eight her the next turn in certain decks <sighs> This card's really interesting. I don't know how to evaluate this. Like, I wish she did more. She doesn't protect herself at all, uh, except for by putting loyalty counters on herself. But if you have no creatures, it's literally just a plus one, right? Like, she's her, her plus one ability is relying on you having creatures. And if you already have creatures, then that's protecting her for you. So there is no inherent protection to this card. Um... It's when you. It's when. It's also whenever you. When a creature enters the battlefield under your control, so you don't actually have to cast the creature, but if it doesn't resolve, like you could. So if I play Register Alpha with this, I draw two cards, but if the Register Alpha doesn't resolve, I don't draw any cards. So that's interesting. See again, that's another. That's another one of those 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 keywords, uh, that are very similar to one another, in Magic, where it's like if it means one thing, it has a very very specific. Uh, effect and if it means one word different it has a, a completely different effect a lot of times and um yeah, i don't know where, i don't know how i feel about this planeswalker i don't know it feels like it does nothing like this is very like i'm reading it now and i'm like this is like the null rod of planeswalkers it does nothing all right hopefully i'm wrong i would love to see this in like a, a green white control deck but i always want to see like obscure control decks so i want to see like um yeah, two people in chat said said white based token decks, and I can see that. You just play this like you you play like three or four guys out, and then you play her and go to eight immediately, and then you negative eight her so that every time you make a guy with legions landing, you just draw a card. <laughs> it's pretty good, but I do worry about the uh, the Abzan token deck uh, because it's already a nightmare to play against. Let alone like when you're making three three tokens a turn and drawing three cards a turn. Like oh god, nightmarish. So here's hoping that's not something that happens because that seems like a nightmare. 
Journey to Eternity. I actually did a, a YouTube video with this and uh, Form of the Dinosaur or whatever it's called. Is that not what it's called? Three mana. Uh, when Enchanted Creature dies, so it's an aura. Enchanted Creature you control. When Enchanted Creature dies, return it to the battlefield under your control. So not only does this flip, but you get the creature back, right? So if I put this on... My my comparison in the video was Sakura Tri Builder. So I play a Sakura Tri Builder on two. On turn three, I play a Journey to Eternity on it. So I have three mana, right? Because I have three lands. So I'm going to sack the Sakura Tri Builder. I'm going to go up to four lands. Journey flips into a land. That's five lands. I get the Sakura Tri Builder back, and I can sack it again if I want to to go up to six lands. And then on turn four, I play a, 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 another land, so it's seven lands, right? And this is what it flips into, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, which is an incredibly strong ability. For five mana, you get to discard something to Liliana if you want. You get to put things into the graveyard with Tassiger. Like, there's all kinds of ways to get creatures into the graveyard in modern. And, um, but, like, if you just go Sakura Tri Builder into this, like, you have seven mana on turn four, which is pretty strong. Um, and, like, the fact that you can just put this on a Thrag Tusk and it comes back. So, at the very worst, like, not only is this flipping and you're getting a land out of it, but it brings the creature back. Like, if it just said, when that creature dies, transform this. I think that's also pretty strong. Like, you get a land and you get a, a, a an infinite reanimation ability. And it puts the creature under the grave, into the battlefield, not into your hand. So, like, they, you can be like, all right, bring back Thrag Tusk, go. And then they're like, kill it. And you're like, all right, bring back Thrag Tusk, go. Like... And, um, yeah, like, that seems amazing. Like, I, this card seems fantastic and super frustrating to play against, especially in Standard, where you're just like, all right, I'll play another Hostage Taker. All right, kill it. Okay, I'll pay five and play another Hostage Taker. And, like, the fact that, like, it just gets the creature back when when you, when you it dies. Like, oh, this card seems fantastic. Again, like, it's funny because I, I like the... Uh, the Simic enchantment, and I like the, the the Golgari enchantment. So I guess I'm just playing Sultai and Standard. Jungle Creeper. 3-3 three, three for 3 for 5 mana. Return it from the graveyard to your hand. This is like, in, in the old day, I can definitely see this uh, being like a, a fantastic finisher. Like, wow, 3-3 three, three for 3 that just keeps coming back. Oh my god, I can never kill it. Like back in the day. And then you just kill everything they have and you just tear apart their hand and you just keep bringing back your 3-3 three, three for, for 3. Um, unfortunately, that's not the days we live in. And uh, this guy is not good. <laughs> so, apologies, Jungle Creeper, but you, you creep creep on out of here, buddy. Go creep somewhere else. Kumina, Tyrant of Orozka. 3 mana for a 2-4. Good deal. All right. Legendary creature, Merfolk Shaman. Okay, another good deal. Tap another untapped Merfolk you control. Kumina can't be blocked. All right, I'll tap my Curse Catcher. Kumina can't be blocked. Seems good. Tap three untapped Merfolk you control. Draw a card. So we have Crypt Breaker. Crypt Breaker ability. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's very good. Tap five untapped Merfolk. Put a 1-1 counter on each Merfolk you control. That is really strong. I think any one of these abilities is very strong by itself. Um... But the fact that they're all, all three of them are on this 2-4 Merfolk for three mana is insanely strong. And I think that's also the reason that this is one of the most expensive cards in the set right now. So, um, yeah, I can definitely see this uh, being being played in both. I can see this being played in Modern. Like, I played the, um, the Blue-Green Merfolk deck in Modern for a Modern Monday once. And it just felt like regular Merfolk with some, some green cards in it. There was no real hiccups because you don't... Like, your mana is not bad, you know? Like, you still have Cavern of Souls, you still have Breed... You just put Breeding Pools and Mystic Rainforest in the deck, and you're fine. So maybe you just play this in Modern, but, I mean, if there's a green... A blue-green Merfolk deck in Standard, this is definitely a card you're going to put in there. Seems good. Legion Lieutenant. 2-2 two, two for 2. Other Vampires get plus 1, plus 1. I love the alliteration on these Lords. Lords like Legion Lieutenant. <laughs> it's like... It's alliteration there. Uh, as it's worded, do you get consecutive effects if you tap five? Do you get all three bonuses? No, you don't, because you're only activating one ability. 
I will activate tap. I will activate the plus one plus one counter ability and tap five Merfolks. That does not give you. That's not also activating the other two abilities because you are you have to choose which one you're using. Like if I have five dollars and I'm at Taco Bell, I can't get everything less than five dollars as well, right? Um, other vampires you control get plus one plus one. This card's great. If there's a black white vampire deck and constructed, you're gonna play it. This card's awesome and limited. Merfolk Mistbinder. There's that alliteration again for that Lord alliteration. Two two for four or two two for two. Again, going straight into the Merfolk deck in constructed. Uh, you're always gonna play this in limited if you have the mana and the Merfolk. You got the mana and the Merfolk. You would play in this. If you got the mana and the Merfolk, you would play a Merfolk Mistbinder. Um, how long am I going to be on for? You just got home, Esper Charm. I will, I will be also doing artifacts and lands after this, so. Uh, Path of Metal. Four, two mana. I was going to say four mana, and then I was like, oh, I can just turn four into a word instead of a number. For two mana. Legendary Enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each creature that doesn't have first strike, double strike, vigilance, or haste. Okay, I don't really like that. What if your opponents do? I guess on the bright side, all of the vampire tokens are going to be 1-1 one, one lifelinkers. So you can kill all the vampire tokens, and you can probably kill most of the uh, merfolk guys that have one toughness. So this is basically protecting red and white creatures, which is interesting. But again, like as far as the off-color enchantments uh, that flip into things go, this is my least favorite so far. Whenever you attack... With at least two creatures that have first strike, double strike, vigilance, and or haste transform it. Oh god, even that's even that's that's even like one of the one of the more difficult flipping triggers as well. Like for the black green one, creatures are just gonna die. That's gonna happen. So okay, no big deal there. Um, for the merfolk one, it's giving you counters, so you don't have to do anything else there. For this one, you actually have to have a specific type of creature. That's rough. What does it turn into? Add a mana of any color to mana pool, obviously. Two and a tap, it deals two damage to each opponent. That's unexciting. Three and a tap, choose a creature at random that attack this turn, destroy that at random? Yeah, this one definitely seems like the worst. Um, I wouldn't even want, the problem is like, it's a legendary enchantment, so you can't even play like two on one turn to like kill two drops. You can, but then one of them dies. Yeah, it's just that this feels like a weird, this feels like a weird card. Yeah, I don't know. You're not drawing cards with it. It has no card advantage. Um, you have to have specific cards in your deck. You have to have your opponent doesn't have specific cards in their deck. And uh, the abilities are unique. Like, you can either destroy a creature at random, which is kind of weird, or you can uh, deal two damage to the opponent. But it just takes so much work. Like, you already have at least two creatures in play. I don't know. Profane Procession, three mana for a legendary enchantment, five mana, exile target creature. Then if there are three or more cards exiled with Profane Procession, transform it. So this is, um, I don't hate this one, but I also think it's the most expensive by an extremely large margin. Like exile, you have to exile three or more creatures with this card, right? So you're spending 18 mana in order to flip it, and when you flip it, it becomes Tomb of the Dusk Rose. Add a mana of any color. Four mana, put a card, a creature card exiled with the permanent with this permanent onto the battlefield under your control. That's interesting to me. So this feels like, yeah, and then you pay another four after that. So you're, by the time you put your first creature into play, it's 22 mana, and it has to be one of the ones you exiled with this. Whereas, un unlike the, the black green one, uh, it could be any any creature in the graveyard. And if you if there if your opponent just doesn't have any good creatures for this, I guess you're fine anyway at that point, but. But good lord, if your opponent's playing like vampires, you really don't want to be spending five mana to exile two twos and one ones. 
Reusable removal is nice, but I don't want to have to spend eight mana to deal with my first creature and then five mana after that to deal with a second creature. Especially if our opponent's going wide. Like, this is good against certain cards like Scarab God, I guess. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I would play this in limited probably because it just sits there. Like, you can play it on turn three and then kind of just ignore it until you absolutely need it. Like, all right, I'll exile your 6-6. Six, six. I'll exile your 5-4. I'll exile your 7-7. Seven, seven, whatever. But I, I would, I, I rarely want to put this in my constructed deck because the cost is just way too high. Or I guess maybe you just play one of them like as a one of and you just play on turn three. And then over time, over the course of a game, you can start killing their guys, exiling their dudes at instant speed. Um... I don't hate that. Like, my biggest reservation about this card, and uh, it's very interesting. The ability is strong, but expensive. And it's also potentially limited, I think. But... Playing it on three and just having a card that says five mana exile a guy up to three times is pretty strong, and then you get those guys back. I don't know. I'm on the fence about this card. Like, the amount of mana is exorbitant but the ability is not terrible so i don't know we'll see protein raider <laughs> oh i gotta get them gains <laughs> it's it's protein raider but yeah it's a, it's funnier the way i said it so three mana for a two two shapeshift pirate shapeshifter pirate that's interesting because it doesn't have all creature types Raid. If you attack with a creature this turn, you may have Protein Raider enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Interesting. Okay. I'm intrigued. It's interesting because you can either have a Grixis Pirate deck, a Red Black Pirate deck, a Blue Black Pirate deck, or a Red Blue Pirate deck. So there's actually four different Pirate decks that I think are possible, uh, which is nice because it lets you choose or combine them all, um, which is a good feeling because it gives you a lot of, a lot of play actually. Yeah, all right. It's a two-two for three at the worst, and it's a pirate, so it's kind of it's kind of cool. I don't like that you have to raid because, like, if you really want to copy their, like, if your opponent has a really good creature in play, you're either gonna have to suicide your guy into it just to trigger raid, or you're, I mean, you're gonna have to have a guy in general, or or you're not gonna be able to play this and do anything about it, right? Like, those are your two options: either lose the guy to the to their guy if they block it, which they probably will if it's that good, or you get a two-two for three. Um, requiring you to raid. Raid is, is such a win more ability because it requires you to have creatures on board and they have to be attacking. So that's interesting. But, I mean, a lot of times the raid deck is going to be a little more aggressive. And uh, maybe you just want to copy your own guys with this. But, I don't know. We'll see. It's, I mean, it's, this card is still fine. Like, it's still a pirate. It's a 2-2 two, two for 3. And uh, I think a lot of times you're going to be copying, like, a hostage taker of your own or something. So, we'll see. Raging Regisaur. Raging Reggie. Four mana for a 4-4. Four, four. That's a good rate. Whenever it attacks, it deals one damage to target creature or player. This is actually great. I mean, I'm not going to play it in standard because there's just better value, but... Um, I mean, maybe... I don't know. Maybe I would. If, if, there's a, if there's a necessity for it, being able to kill a 1-1 of life liking vampire return is great. But... I doubt it. I think there's better options. And uh, the other thing is this guy is amazing and limited. I'll play a 4-4-4-4 four, 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 four all day because it's just super strong. Like That's a great rate for limited. And the fact that this guy just has to attack to shoot something is also pretty good. So, Relentless Raptor. Let me check something real quick. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, 3-3 three, three for 2. It attacks or blocks each combat if able, and it has Vigilance. This guy's fine. I mean, you're going to be wanting to attack with a 3-3 three, three for 2 every turn anyway, so whatever. And um, if they have a bigger thing, you probably also have a bigger thing at that point because you're playing Dinosaurs. So your guys are probably just going to be trumping their guys. And there's plenty of removal in red and white to clear the path. So that's cool. Also, keep in mind that uh, this guy can deal damage to your own guys as well to trigger your own Enrage, which is just great. So, I mean, if you guys have, if you have this guy on board when you play the uh, the poly dinosaur, um, you can just make a five five, make another five five, which is pretty cool. So, I like I like the versatility and the subtlety of, of of cards like this, where it's like, hey, 
you think it's it's best shooting your opponent or one of their creatures, but really you can do it to your own creatures as well because that's an in that's a a, a, a baked in mechanic here. So that's pretty cool. Resplendent Griffin, flying. Whenever it attacks, if you have a city's blessing, put a one-one counter on it. This card's great, actually. Two-two for three is uh, pretty solid automatically. This does not look like a Griffin at all. It looks like a Parakeet. So I don't know why it's not Resplendent Parakeet. But I mean, this is just a two-two flyer for three, which is pretty standard limited fare. And if you have the city's blessing, you just get more. And the nice thing is this, you don't have to wait till the upkeep. So if you play this while you have the city's blessing, or if this gives you the city's blessing, you just get a you get a three through flyer that turn. Uh or the next turn, or like whenever it attacks, basically. So I think this card's good. Probably not gonna see constructed play, but this is a fantastic limited card. Siege Horn Ceratops. Two two for two. Whenever it is delta damage, put two one one counters on it. Say this is a situation where you just want to shoot it with that raptor, that four four. Is that a raptor? I don't even know if it's a raptor. It's a Raging Regisar. Raging Reggie. But yeah, I mean, like, otherwise you're probably not going to play a 2-2 two, two for 2. Like, I'm sorry. The situations where this guy takes damage and survives are so slim. Um, you're not going to be... No you're, no opponent's going to be attacking their 1-1 one, one into this, and you're not going to be... They're not going to be blocking with their 1-1s. One, you're either going to trade or, uh, or nothing. If you're building your deck around enraging your dinosaurs and you just want to shoot this guy a bunch of times, that's cool. But he still kind of dies. I definitely play this in limited just because there's a lot more situations uh, where it can be big and there's a lot more you know, playful one damage cards that you can use. But otherwise, I'm sorry, a little, a little cutie. This guy is not going to make the cut. Storm Fleet Sprinter. Three mana for a 2-2 two -two with haste that can't be blocked. I mean, Phantom Warrior was we all mentioned Phantom Phantom Warrior in the other in the other set review. It's a two two for three uh, that can't be blocked, and this guy just has haste, and it's a pirate. I think this is actually pretty good. Hmm. I mean, maybe I don't know. This card obviously played unlimited because it just gets in there for two, and it's just basically on par with uh, like Skylight Sky Knight Legionnaire from Ravnica. That was in Ravnica, right? Boros? Yeah. Which was a 2-2 flyer with haste for three. And instead of flying, this just says can't be blocked. Which is better. And see, it's not strictly better because uh, Sky Knight Legionnaire can block flyers. And uh, this guy cannot. But it can't be blocked by flyers. So, you know, pros and cons again. But uh, yeah, as far as, uh, like you guys said, Siegehorn Ceratops can be... Uh, it is good friends with Winding Constrictor and uh, Walking Ballista, obviously. Like, you can just go Walking Blister for three, shoot it, make it a 4-4, four, four, shoot it, make it a 6-6. Six, six. Significantly larger when you have um, Winding Constrictor out. But, I mean, if you just want to go strictly white-green, yeah, that is an option. And uh, I can definitely see that being a situation. See, like, and again, like, most of these cards are very, very good in the correct context. So you have this guy, and if you have Walking Blista, cool. Otherwise, it's just a 2-2 two, two for two, which is a little bit uneventful for me but i'm willing to give i'm willing to give you a chance stormy cg cg i don't know yeah this card's also fine not sure if it's gonna see constructed play but i i cannot i wouldn't be surprised if it did uh because it takes advantage of all the pirate synergies which is cool but there doesn't seem to be a pirate lord other than like uh admiral beckett brass i believe that's a lord Storm the Vault, the uh, the blue-red one, this was spoiled initially as well. It is four mana. Whenever one or more creatures you control do combat damage to a player, create a colorless treasure token. So no matter if it's one creature or if it's four creature that deals combat damage, you get to you get a treasure token. This is also great with all the evasive uh, pirates, like uh, the one that just can't be blocked or any flyers. At the beginning of your end step, if you control five or more artifacts, transform it. So any artifacts, not just the treasures, but it does help flip itself. Um, that's this this front ability is just fine, and then it just transforms into Talarian Academy, right? Add one man of any color, or add a, add a blue for each artifact you control. So presumably you're gonna have five. So then you flip it, and you can make five mana with this. That's actually pretty sweet. I like this card a lot. People keep talking about Revel and Riches, um, because there's apparently a lot of cards that go along with it, especially the uh, also the blue. 
uh, the, the not the blue, the red seven mana sorcery card that puts a number of treasures equal to the number of lands you control. There's a bunch of cards that are just putting in a bunch of treasures right now, and um, that's pretty interesting. So any card, any cards that are going to make this obscure revel and riches deck a thing, uh, are okay with me, and I and hopefully that's that's true because that seems pretty cool, and that's. A, that's a deck I really don't mind losing to at FNM. If I sit down and play five different energy decks, um, it's just not a good time. But if I'm sitting down playing against like Revel and Riches with Storm the Vault and uh, the other card, like uh, cool, cool, that seems fun. I would love a, a Bearful Strix reprint. I don't think it's too strong of a card, and I would love to see it, especially in modern. So that's a good point. Zakama Primal Calamity. This card is amazing, and I'm a super huge fan of it. Um, I'm, a, I'm as big a fan of this as I was of Gishath in, uh, in, in Ixalan. Um, so 6, 7, 8, 9 mana. That's a lot. But it's a dinosaur, so there's a bunch of ways to cheat on this. Uh, Vigilance, Reach, Trample. Uh, when Zakama Primal Calamity enters the battlefield, if you cast it, untap all lands you control. So you just play it for 9, untap 9 lands. That's pretty insane, which means you can use all three of the abilities. So that's kind of elegant, right? Um, like they cast, they costed all of the abilities in such a way that if you paid this with nine mana with one white, one green and one red, you can reuse all of those abilities to, ca to activate each one of, of Zakama's abilities. You can deal three damage to a creature, which is huge, or you can deal nine damage depending on if you have three red, you can destroy an artifact or enchantment or destroy three artifacts or enchantments, or you can gain three to nine life, uh, all of which are pretty powerful. So... Uh, it also has Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. I can understand why this doesn't have Haste, because good lord, that's disgusting. Um, but yeah, this creature is really cool. And, and the nice thing is, like, even if they kill it, you still get to untap your lands, so you could potentially play something else, which is kind of cool. And uh, if they wait till the end of your turn to kill it, then you still get to activate its abilities in response, which is nice. So there's a bunch of different, bunch of different benefits to, to this card. Um, so it's not just like a big dumb dinosaur. So that's cool. But uh, yeah, this is, these have been the gold cards. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it again. If you guys haven't done so, be sure to smash those like and subscribe buttons down there. Really appreciate it. It helps me out. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next time for the artifact and land cards. Be sure to check out the uh, white, blue, black, green, and red cards as well if you missed those. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it.